Hello everyone and welcome to Living Coast in your living room. My name is Ashley, one of the educators here at the Living Coast Discovery Center. During this time, we are bringing educational videos to you here on our YouTube channel. Every day, Monday to Friday on YouTube, we will be premiering different educational videos for you to get a chance to learn a little bit more about nature from the comfort of your own home. Now, be sure to follow along as we will post those different videos every single day at 11 a.m. And today, we are actually going to go on a virtual hike. Are you ready? So today, we are going on a hike throughout our trails on the San Diego Bay National Wildlife Refuge. I will show you a map of what they look like. So here, you can see our map of the Sweetwater Safari Guide. If you want to check it out on your own, be sure to download that PDF. Now, we are going to go out on the Coyote Trail today. So the main trail is what we did previously on Living Coast in your living room. And today, we're going to make that first left. Now, whenever you go out into a hiking area, it is important to make sure that you've done some research and you know where you're going to go. So having a map and being able to read the map is very important. Now, whenever you go out hiking, you do want to make sure that you know how to orient your map. So if I'm going to orient my map, I need to turn it this way so that it matches. So my main trail is going straight out towards the bay. And then I can make that left hand turn to go onto Coyote Trail. Let's go ahead and get started. Now, there hasn't been any visitors on the refuge due to the closure right now. So we have a pretty decent chance of being able to see some wildlife today. I will do my best to record them whenever possible, but there's no guarantee the animals will stay long enough for me to record them. Now, previously on Living Coast in Your Living Room, we talked about scat identification. We are lucky enough to be able to see some coyote scat here on the trails. Now, this is a really large scat, which tells us one of two things. Either it is a really large coyote, or this coyote has been eating extremely well. Now, previously we talked about how you're able to identify this scat and tell it apart from others, so we're going to move on over from that, but just trust me on this one, it's from a coyote. Now, coyotes are most active at dawn and dusk, so we don't need to worry about them during this time on our hike. It is about 11 a.m. here, so it's a little too late in the morning for a coyote to be active. Now, along our trail, you can see all of these beautiful California sunflower bushes and many of the different native plant species. Now, you might notice on some of them that they're not all fully going to have flowers on them. So you can see some of them have those yellow flowers and some of them look like they're starting to kind of shrivel up or fall off. And that's totally normal for our native plants. That does happen seasonally. Here during the summertime, it gets really hot and we don't have a lot of different rain sources coming in. So the native plant species will actually drop off those petals as well as curl up some of those leaves to help protect themselves so that they can reduce the amount of sunlight that they are absorbing. Now up ahead, you are getting a chance to see our light-footed Ridgeway Rails proving enclosures. We work closely with U.S. Fish and Wildlife to breed and reintroduce this endangered species of bird back into the native habitats of San Diego. Now these are called proving enclosures and these are one of the areas that the birds have to be able to survive in on their own. So we bring the birds over here when they're old enough and actually observe them from a distance to make sure that they are successfully able to hunt and find their own food sources. Now this is how we can watch their behavior and make sure that they have signs that are showing them that they are ready to be released out into the wild into the different marsh habitats across San Diego County. Now this trail here actually has some higher edges to it on the sides and these different edges are the great opportunity for animals to be able to create burrows. So I'm going to do my best to try to film some of those burrows for you. Sometimes it can be hard to see them as they do vary in size. So there's a pretty small one right here. Now there are different burrows up and down this entire trailhead here. And there are many of them that are going to be from different sizes. Now what kind of animals do you think might be making these burrows? What kind of animals do you think 
made burrows here on the San Diego Bay National Wildlife Refuge. So some of the options are going to include things like mice and rats, moles, voles, and some of the bigger ones like this one can actually be able to accommodate some of those larger animals. So something maybe like the size of a desert cottontail or rabbit, and that's the species of rabbit we have here. Or it could even be something as big as a fox. So foxes can actually be here as well. Foxes make dens that look really small from the entranceway, and then they're actually really wide underneath. So they only make the entrance as big as their head to try to keep it as small as possible to avoid letting predators get in. Now here on the refuge, we've also have spotted burrowing owls as well. So any of these types of animals could have been making these burrows along the edges of this trail. We do not know exactly which burrow belonged to which animal unless we see the animal actually using the burrow. Many of these burrows have been abandoned and we can find evidence of different animals surviving in them. Evidence includes things like scat and their leftover food sources. We have been able to find all kinds of different bones of different animals in those burrows as well as in the area just directly in front of those burrows. So right now we are getting a little closer towards the end of the coyote trail before it pans off into the area that leads to our bird blind, which actually is going to take us over towards the ocean. So now you can see the ocean as we're walking through our coyote trail and on the left you can actually see a little stream. Now this small stream is actually not going to be fresh water, it is ocean water. And this stream is actually coming from the Living Coast Discovery Center from under and around on that side. So what happens is here at the Living Coast we are very lucky to be able to use natural seawater in all of our aquarium exhibits. We pump it in, we clean it and use it, then we clean it and actually send it back out. So we're on what's called an open system. So it runs through this stream, which then eventually goes out into that settling pond up ahead. Along the way, this stream provides all kinds of food sources for many different plants and animals, as there's lots of different organisms that can be found inside of this small saltwater stream. Now here we are at our settling pond, which is one of the last stops this stream is going to make before it goes out into the ocean. Do you see all of that green stuff out there? What do you think that is? A lot of people think that might be moss, but it is actually algae. So that is a big patch of algae that is growing across that pond, and some of it is going to be actually called sea lettuce. So this algae and sea lettuce that's growing in this pond allows for many different organisms to be able to survive in this pond. We've been able to conduct plankton toe samples out here through the stream and into this pond and been able to find all kinds of different animals, including things like sea stars and brittle stars and all kinds of fun planktonic critters. Now I'm going to continue walking, get a little closer towards the ocean. And as I walk around, you guys are gonna see a kind of what looks like a shortcut area but I did not take it. I kept walking around it. Now, when you go out on hikes, it's very important that you are staying on the designated trail. Trails can often become eroded and shortcuts get created as people think that that's the best route to take. But those shortcuts can actually be highly problematic for the environment as they can cause erosion. So the area is starting to break down and that can actually be potentially dangerous for the hiker as well. So you do want to make sure whenever you go hiking, you are staying on that designated trail as best as possible. So now we're coming up on this pond and usually we can see lots of different animals inside of this pond, including things like snails and fiddler crabs. So let's take a moment and get up close to the pond and see if we can see any of those animals. Doesn't really look like any of them are out today, but that's all right. We can still get a nice view of what the pond looks like. Now, just because we don't see them doesn't mean they're not there. But up ahead, it does look like we have a different visitor. Do you see that small little white thing moving across the distance? 
Well, that is actually a snowy egret. Let's get a little closer and then hopefully we can zoom in, but not too far because we don't want to distort the image so we can get a nice picture of what this egret is doing. Now, this is a snowy egret, which is a type of shorebird. You can see this bird is able to easily walk through the water without getting stuck in that mud. So they do have really long legs that allow them to walk through the water and the mud without getting stuck in it and also keeping their feathers nice and dry. They also have long beaks. So egrets will actually walk through the water and look for something and then they'll actually pause and wait and then reach into the water with their long beaks and find whatever it is they can. Egrets will eat things like crabs, snails, worms, and even small types of fish. Snowy egrets are very common all over in San Diego, most often spotted in our bays and in our estuaries. Now, one of the best things about going on a nature hike is taking a few moments to just stop and enjoy whatever is around you. Listening to the sounds of nature can calm you down and give you that feeling that you're looking for. So going out and just taking a moment to stop and enjoying what it is you can see and hear. So here we actually have this beautiful view of San Diego Bay and all the way across the water you can actually see Coronado Island. So it definitely pays off to take a moment and just stop and listen and hang out and see whatever it is you can see all the way around you. Now, I hope you've had a great time enjoying our ocean views from Coyote Trail this morning. Thanks for joining us here on our YouTube channel, and be sure to check out any of our other videos as they come.